Hello everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Okay. Okay. So tomorrow we will be talking about comfort in the storm. So before that we will be reading Matthew chapter 14 verses 22 to 33. May I may, may invite everyone to please stand up in reverence to God's words. Matthew chapter 14, verses 22 to 33. Immediately after he compelled the disciples to get into the boat and to go ahead of him to the other side while he sent the crowds away. After he had sent the crowds away, he went up on the mountain and by himself to pray. And when it was evening, he was there alone. But the boat was already a long distance from the land, battered by the waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, he came to them walking on the sea. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were ter terrified and said, It is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Jesus spoke to them, saying, Take courage, it is I, it is I, do not be afraid. Peter responded and said to him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. And he said, Come. And Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water and came towards Jesus. But seeing the wind, he became frightened. And when he began to sink, he cried out, saying, Lord, save me! Immediately, immediately, Jesus reached out with his hand and took hold of him and said to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind stopped, and those who were in the boat, and those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, You are truly the Son of God's Son, you may be seated. So, we will be talking about comforts in the storm. This is the story after Jesus fed miraculously the thousands of men by multiplying two fish and five bread. Remember that? Limang tinapay at dalawang isda. And after Jesus commanded the disciples to get into the boat immediately, because the people are revolting to make Jesus our, as their king. And while doing this, Jesus also dismissed the people to go home. And after Jesus did all of this, he went into the hills to pray and stayed there until the night. So that's the story before uh, Matthew chapter 14. Note this. When the Bible talks about storms experienced by his people, experienced by Christians, we are talking about storms in the life. So, there are two kinds of storms. The first is the storm of perfection. The second is the storm of perfection. And today we will, we will be talking about storm of perfection. Next Sunday, oh no. Next, next Sunday, we will be talking about storm of correction. But today, perfection muna. Storm of correction, this is what Jonah, you know Jonah? Mm -hmm. Prophet Jonah, eaten by Sapsap? You think Sapsap? <laughs> Prophet Jonah was. <laughs> this is what prophet Jonah experienced when he disobeyed the Lord God is disciplining Jonah for his misconduct God is correcting the prophet Jonah so that's why he experienced a storm and then eaten by a sapsa Okay. The second storm is storm of perfection. This is what the disciples experienced in 
uh, Matthew chapter 8 and Matthew chapter 14. You can open or you can turn on your Bible. Dun. They encountered the storm not because they did something wrong. They encountered a storm, the storm, because they obeyed God. God wants them to grow. God is perfecting their faith. So, storm, whether you disobey or you obey God, it will happen. It will happen. Matthew chapter 8, Matthew told us, the disciples experience in the storm with Jesus sleeping. Remember that? Natutulog si Jesus Christ habang yung mga disciples ay nag-worry, right? Master, Master, don't you care? Di ba? Remember that? Lulubog na tayo. We are sinking. Jesus, in Matthew chapter 8, Jesus is inside, was inside the boat, right? Matthew chapter 14, another storm, uh, six chapters and different, Jesus was out of the boat. Jesus is perfecting their faith. Get it? Mm -hmm. So, what are the encouragements or what are the comforts that we can get in Matthew chapter 14 during the storm. Many Christians think that when they follow the gentle, loving, gracious Jesus, everything will be fine, everything will be okay. But many Christians think that when they, when they follow Christ, they are exempted to trials, sickness, and difficulties. But it is wrong. It is wrong. Trials, sickness, and difficulties are inevitable. They are necessary for Christians. Mm -hmm. Right? So, we must invite storms. <laughs> but we must remember the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. John chapter 15, verse 20, English Standard Version says, Remember the word that I said to you, A servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they kept my word, they will also keep yours. Remember this, I will repeat. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. This is part of the storm. John chapter 16, verse, verse 33, NIV version. In this world, you will have trouble. It is a promise. Promise the Jesus Christ para sa lahat ng Kristiyano. But don't lose hope. Don't lose hope, my brothers and sisters in Christ. We will not be focusing on the storm itself, but on the encouragement of Jesus. Let's begin. Our first encouragement is this. Jesus knows your trouble. Everybody say, Jesus knows your trouble. Mark chapter 6 verse 48, a parallel passage. Christian Standard Bible, 648. He saw that they were in serious trouble, rowing hard and struggling against the wind and the waves. Maybe you are thinking, you are just alone. Nobody understands your pain. Nobody understands my trouble. First thing first, Jesus Christ commanded the disciples to get into the boat. Jesus, the all-knowing, the omniscient Son of God, knows that there will be a storm to come to the disciples. But Jesus sent them anyway. Jesus sent them anyway. Even though he knows that there will be storms in the sea. But one comfort is this. Wait. John chapter 6 verse 19, another parallel passage, told us how far did the disciples reach John 6 verse 19. Then when they had rowed about 25 or 30 
stadia, possibly three to four miles or four point what? Four point eight. Four point eight to six point four kilometers. It was like from here to Agadan, just like that. Tama ba yung sinabi ko? Agla. 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 Just like that. Sinas niya sa Google Maps eh. Kaso nilikuli ko. So, ganun na kalayo. Yung narating ng mga disciples. But Mark chapter 6 verse 48 told us that Jesus saw them. No matter how far they reach, Jesus can still Right? So, what did Jesus saw? Matthew chapter 6 verse 48 told us the disciples were in what? First, serious trouble. Two, rowing hard. And third, struggling against the wind and the waves. No matter what the distance was, still Jesus knows the condition of his disciples. Let me ask you these questions. Are you in serious trouble? Are you rowing hardly through the waves of this life? Are you struggling? Let me remind you of this. Jesus knows. Jesus knows. You are not alone. So, at this very moment, Jesus is not on a hill praying far away from us. Let me remind you of this. That Jesus, the omniscient Son of God. Yes. Next. Jesus, the omniscient Son of God, is now seated on the throne with power and authority in the heavens. He can see you. He knows your pain. He knows your storm. What a comfort. Comforting po ba? That Jesus knows your troubles. Huh? Comforting ba yun? Na hindi lang ikaw yung nag-iisip ng pinagdaraanan mo. Ha? So, second encouragement. This will be short. Second encouragement. Jesus will come. Jesus will come. Matthew chapter 14 verse 25. And in the fourth watch of the night, He came to them walking on the sea. Natutuyo na yung aglalamunan. He came to them. Nagpaparinig lang. <laughs> he came to them walking on the sea. According to NIV Cultural Background Study Bible, the fourth watch of the night means, next, yan, the, the fourth watch of the night means before dawn, madaling araw. Literally, the text me speaks of the fourth watch of the night based on the Roman division of the night into four parts. Wow, hindi nabasa to, ha? Hmm. Wala na ba akong ibang joke? Based on Roman division of the night into four parts, the fourth the fourth watch refers to the final hours before dawn. It is between 3 and 6 a.m. So, yun yung fourth watch. Jesus came between 3 to 6 a.m. Notice this, Mark chapter 6, verses 47 to 48. When it was evening, the boat was in the middle of the sea. And when he was alone on the land, seeing them straining at their oars, for the wind was against them, at about the fourth watch of the night, he came to them walking on the sea. Notice, when it was still evening, Jesus already saw them. Evening. But Jesus came between 3 to 6 a.m. He led the disciples to experience the storm overnight. So, wag na po kayo magtataka kung bakit nararanasan niyo yan ngayon. He is letting you to experience that. Why? For what reason? He is perfecting our faith. So, 
What can we see here? Yes, it is true. Jesus will come to us. That's a comfort. He will come to us to rescue us. That's another comfort. But He will come, remember this, He will come according to His timeline. According to His timeline. It is His timeline, not your timeline. Always remember that. So, that's the reason why Christians mm, nagre-reklamo. Parang late si Jesus Christ. Bakit parang Jesus is late? He will come, but in His timeline. In His timeline. Sometimes He will let us experience the storm for quite some time. The duration, it is Him to decide. It is Him who will decide. Isaiah chapter 43 verse 2. This is an encouragement also. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they will not overflow you. No matter what, this is our comfort in the times of storm. He will come. Tell the person besides you, He will come. Jesus will come. Okay, that's good. Good job. He knows when is the best time to come. Magkaiba tayo ng best time. So yung best natin is not best kay Jesus Christ. Notice again, Jesus came walking in the waters. The very thing they feared, which is the sea, was only a staircase, a staircase for him to come. Get that? Get that? I will repeat. Jesus came walking in the waters. The very thing they feared, which is the sea, was only a staircase for him to come to them. So, according to the Bible Exposition Commentary, often, oh, often we fear the difficult experiences of life, such as surgery and bereavement, only to discover, only to discover that these experiences bring Jesus closer to us. Hmm. Think about it. Bakit... Bakit may storm? Kasi, when everything is fine, hindi nyo naman in-exercise yung faith nyo, right? Right. Jesus used the storm to come closer to the disciples with, with gulat effect, with wow effect, right? So, uh, sa mga students, yung exam nyo, Gusto ko sanang i-chat to kagabi sa group chat namin eh. Uh, how was your prayer life with or without exam? Nikki told me, eh, I was praying like crazy. Right? So, huwag na kayo magtaka kung bakit may mga storms sa life. Kasi, storms of life drives you out crazy. Right? Drives you out crazy. Yung tears nyo for Christ, it was crazy. Right, Camille? Ay, magaling si Camille. Eh. Right, Casey? Nagiging close tayo kay Jesus Christ pag may storm. Ang dami mong prayer life. Every, every two hours, nagpe-pray. Right? So, often we fear the difficult experiences of life, such as surgery and or bereavement or examinations. Only to discover that these experiences bring Jesus closer to us. Amen? So, wag nang matakot sa storm. Another comfort, Jesus can walk through the impossibilities of life. Hmm. He will not just come to us. Nung bata ko, nung when I read this in when I was a child, akala ko applicable yan sa lahat, na kaya ko ding gawin yan. Kaya punta, pupunta ko ng, ba't bumababa? Matatapos na ako, wait lang. Kala ko, kapag nung nabasa ko to, kaya ko rin lumakad sa tubig. Hindi pala. Iba yun. Okay, third encouragement. 
Jesus will encourage. Oh, another comfort. Jesus will encourage. What kind of encouragement? Matthew chapter 14, verse 27, NASB. But immediately, oh, but immediately, Jesus spoke to them saying, Take courage, it is I. It is I. Do not be, what? Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. How did Jesus encourage his disciples? The disciples, oh, this is what happened. The disciples saw somebody walking into the waters and thought it was a ghost. When Jesus said, take courage, it is I, do not be afraid. Then Jesus said to his disciples, take courage, it is I, do not be afraid. This is to remove the fear of the disciples. Jesus said, it is I. The Greek means ego I me. Ego I me in Greek, uh, in Hebrew means I am. Remember I am? I am is the name of God. When he spoke to Moses, right? And through the burning bush. Remember that? Diba? Nagbaburn yung bush. Pero hindi siya nauubos. Then Moses asked, Who are you? I am what I am. So, sa passage na to, take courage. I am. I am. I am God. Jesus is saying to his disciples, do not be afraid. I am God. Amen? Do not be afraid. I am God. So, what an encouragement that this Jesus who is standing on the water telling us not to be afraid. He is God. The fact that he is standing on the water shows us his power. He is sovereign over science. He is sovereign over the law of buoyancy. Know that? Hindi ko din alam yun. Nabasa ko lang. Yung buoyancy, di ba? Kamil, alam ba yun? Anyway. He is sovereign above everything. Diba? Sa pangkaraniwang tao, we will think. Diba? Pero sa kanya, no. Hindi siya applicable sa kanya. He is sovereign above everything. What a comfort. Next. Jesus is sovereign. He is in control. Jesus is sovereign he is in control. What a comfort. And this will lead us to our fourth encouragement. I will end soon. Jesus will save. Everybody say, Jesus will save. By this time, Peter acknowledges Jesus and attempted to come to him. And to walk in the waters also. And what a leap of faith. Remember, they are in the storms. That's a trouble already. Diba trouble na yung storm? Tapos ang gusto pa ni Peter, bumaba pa sa boat. That's a leap of faith. That's a leap of faith. Peter began walking to the water until he saw the winds and became afraid. This caused him to sink. Matthew chapter 14, verses 30, 30 to 31 said, But seeing the wind, he became frightened. Oh, that's how you say frightened. <laughs> Why? Oh, everybody say frightened. Oh, yeah, natutunan kay sa akin, no? But seeing the wind, he became frightened. And when he began to sink, he cried out, saying, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out with his hand and took hold of him and said to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? What can we see here? Remember this. When we, next, when we focus ourselves to Christ, we can walk through the waters. But when we focus on the winds, the storms, 
we will sink. Kanino po kayo naka-focus? Kanino po kayo naka-focus? If you want to walk through the waters, focus. Set your focus to Christ. If you want to sink, then focus on the winds and the waters. Focus on the problem. Sure po yun. You will sink. Hindi po ko <laughs> But this is part of our weaknesses, right? We, this is part of our weakness. We always set our focus on the wrong things. There are times na nangyayari yun. That's why we sink. But the good thing that Peter did was, guess, anong ginawa niyang maganda? May ginagawa ba siyang maganda? Bukod sa pinagkalo nila si Jesus Christ. <laughs> huh? What? Okay. Nawala tuloy ako. But the good thing that Peter did was he called to Christ for help. He called to Christ for help. He said, Lord, save me. Everybody say, Lord, save me. Lord, save me. Oh, that's right. That's how you say it. Peter cried out saying, Lord, save me. Yes, meron tayong weaknesses. That's why we sing. But merong solution. We have a solution. All we have to do is to say the magic words, Lord, save me. Amen. Amen. He will come. He will come. He will come to rescue us. First, we need to acknowledge that we are sinking. Second, we need to acknowledge that we can't do anything, right? Apart from Him, we can do nothing. And then third, we need to utter the words that Peter said, Lord, save me. Matthew told us what Jesus did. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and took hold of him. What a comfort. Mayroon description dun. Immediately, immediately, Jesus reached out with his hand and took hold of him. Remember the word immediately. Jesus is not just a savior from sin. Not just on the cross, but in everyday lives. Jesus is not just a savior from sin. He is also a savior from troubles. Amen. Amen. So, after all of this, what had happened? Matthew chapter 14, verses 32 to 33 said, When they got into the boat, the wind stopped, and those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, You are truly God's son. Let's compare it first to the first storm that the disciples experienced. Next slide. Matthew chapter 8, let's, let's compare Matthew chapter 8 and Matthew chapter 14. Matthew chapter 8, remember, Jesus is in the boat. Matthew chapter 14, Jesus was outside the boat. Matthew chapter 8, Jesus calms the storm. Matthew chapter 14, Jesus walked on the water and made the wind cease. Matthew chapter 8, what is the result? Pwede nyo bang itaas-taas ng konti? Ah, no, 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 baba pala. We will focus here. What is the result of the first storm? And what is the result of the second storm? Matthew chapter 8 verse 27 said, The men were amazed and said, What kind of a man is this that even the winds and the sea obey him? The disciples said, what kind of man is this? Then Matthew chapter what, 14, verse 33 said, Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. Amen. Amen. Jesus is increasing our faith. 
always remember that. He is proving His deity. He is proving to us that He is God. And He accomplished it. Diba? Una, tao pa lang siya sa harapan ng kanyang mga disciples. What kind of man is this? But in chapter 14, verse 33, they proclaim and worship Jesus Christ as the true Son of God. See the difference? See the difference? Hmm? Di ko galit. Sana na-experience natin yun habang nakakaranas tayo ng storm. God uses the storms, waves, and strong winds to perfect the faith of the disciples. When God is putting you to a storm, in a storm, He is perfecting your faith. Remember that. Be encouraged by this. Jesus knows your storm. Nothing is happening to you that he didn't permit, that he didn't know. Jesus will come to you. He is our ever-present help. Amen. Jesus will encourage you. His deity and his attributes are the best encouragements to take courage. It is I. Do not be afraid. Number four, Jesus will save. He is your personal savior. Amen. Look at number one. Number one reveals God's omniscience. Number two reveals God omnipresence. Re- number three reveals God omnipotence. Ah, number four reveals God omnipotence. Remember that that the God we serve is the God omnipresent, omniscient, and omnipotent. And He also the God who is immutable. He will never change. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. If Jesus can save Peter and the disciples, He can also save you. Amen? And what is our response to this? Matthew chapter 14, verse 32 to 33 said, When they got into the boat, the wind stopped, and those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, You are truly God's Son. What is our response? Have faith in Christ. Have faith in Christ. Believe that Jesus is the true Son of God. Trust him. Trust Him. Second best response. As we acknowledge who He is, what He has done, and what He can do, the second best response is this. Worship Him. He deserves it. Amen? Let us pray. Aman aming Dios, Heavenly Father, we want to praise, praise You. Because you are the true Son of God. Thank you for your comfort. That you know our trouble. Thank you that we know that you will come to us. Thank you that we know. Because we know that you will encourage us. Thank you because we know that you will save us. Thank you for your word. And Lord, we are praying, please increase our faith. And this is our prayer, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Um, let's pray for the best and the great. Lord Jesus, um, thank you for the life of you to us. And thank you for blessing us every day. Um, this is a service that's in our that we will give to you And may continue to bless each and everyone in here, Lord. Bless them with your great kindness. Please be your great kindness.
they believe because they see, right? In the uh, end of John, it says, Thomas, you know, you believe because you have seen. But blessed those who believe without seeing. You know, and thank you, Father God, for really bringing the biggest man to their knees. You know? <laughs> but I got a message to share with you guys this morning. You know, when I pray every day and every night to find a new place in this world. And I didn't think I'd be here today. <clears throat> Talking about times of trouble that we go through and the troubles that we face in life is very difficult for a lot of us in this day to get through everything. But there is Jesus is there and Jesus is there for you. I'm kind of a little nervous. I kind of first one for me. So thank you, Father God. Um, sorry, here is But yeah, I was, um, you know. Everybody knows how much Jesus loves us, right? And uh, I thank Father God for bringing me here today and showing me the right ways to live my life. I'm sorry, I had a trouble finding this message in here. I had it in here. But, uh, there we go. <laughs> so we go through times travels and it's very difficult to get by but you know you know you can't change what's behind you but you can do something about what's in front of you god's mercy is bigger than any mistake we, you've made he can still get you where you're supposed to be you have to do something important forgive yourself you have enough people in your life against you don't be against yourself don't go around thinking, thinking about everything you've done wrong. Just thank God every day for getting you here today. Amen. Amen. Yeah. You know, when I was reading the Bible, I didn't understand it. When I first read it, I didn't see nothing. Nothing. I didn't understand it the second time, the third time, the first time. You know, and I started seeing these messages hidden in the Bible. You know, Philippians 4, 13, where I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And I love that verse because I can't. I'm here. I'm sober. I am clean. I'm part of a, a straight up program, residence recovery. I'm grateful to be here today, standing in front of you guys. Thank you.
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we praise you for you are the holy and the faithful God. Lord, we want to praise you for you are the omniscient, the omnipresent, and the omnipotent, and also the immutable God. Lord, thank you. Thank you for your word. Thank you for you, our visitor this morning. Thank you, Lord, for everyone. Lord, we want to pray for Ate Karen's flight on Wednesday. May you please protect them, protect her, Lord, as she went to the Philippines. Lord, we are also praying for our members who's having sicknesses. Lord, heal them. And we are praying for everybody's safety as we live this life. And Lord, may we see each other next Lord's Day with our thanksgiving, worship, and praise. Everybody, let us receive God's blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.